pilot takes off from Sir Siretse Khama International Airport. After stealing a plane, he heads towards a baby shower taking place at an aero club in Rasesa. He descends and begins a series of low passes overhead Matsieng Flying Club. Unsure of his intentions, the crowd, including his wife, starts to disperse and run away. Find out what happens next in this episode of Lesotho's Pride. On the 23rd of March 2019, around 6.15 p.m. in the evening, the Super King Air B-200 begins to execute a series of low passes overhead Matsieng Aerodrome. The final low-level pass along runway 35 results in the aircraft impacting the Aero Club facility as well as the air traffic control tower. A fire ensued, destroying 13 vehicles on site. Now usually at this point I ask the question, what caused this crash? But the evidence is quite clear that it is solely human factors at play. Hence I wouldn't mention much about the aircraft itself. You may also ask the question, why have I chosen this case? If you have caught on, this hasn't taken place in South Africa, but instead in Botswana. For me, this channel is all about Southern African aviation and this case study is as close to home as one can get. But for context, Matsieng Aerodrome is located northeast of Khabarone, and Sir Seretse Khama International Airport is located in the northern outskirts of Khabarone itself. So at whichever speed in which he flew at, he would have reached Matsieng Aerodrome within minutes. Looking at the pilots itself, we are aware that he is or he was a 37 year old male. It's unclear what kind of license he had, but according to reports, we can deduce. It was either a commercial pilot license or a airline transport pilot license. The aircraft was less than 19 seats, so if he did have a commercial pilot license, he would be legally allowed to captain the craft. Now, I mentioned that the evidence was quite clear that it was human factors at play. It is agreed upon that between 60 to 80% of aviation crashes are caused by pilot error. In this instance, it is a matter that is generally stigmatized and that is mental health. I have to mention at this point that an accident report was not used as the basis of this video, but it is said that the consensus is that this pilot was facing financial and marital problems, as well as personality traits that were not aid in his well-being. And so my focus on this video is to shed some light on mental health how as pilots we are checked and regulated on it throughout our career, the stigma and consequences towards such a stigma and what help exists for us because let's face it, life does have its ups and downs. In our pilot career, we have three phases. The start of our career, which includes our pilot training, our career itself where we are flying, and of course, last but not least, the end of our career where we are not flying. Now, during the start of our career, we have to go for a medical assessment, either for a class one medical, which is for professional flying. And within that, we have to be tested every 12 months if you are under the age of 40 or a class two medical, which you can use for recreational flying for your private pilot license, again, under the age of 40, but you're only checked every five years. Now, it is at this point where we would be asked questions on mental health, but nothing too in depth. However, I can think of two situations in which you can be asked in depth, and that is related to psychometric questions. If you are enrolled in an integrated program, a training program, or if you are enrolled through a cadet sponsored pilot program. Prior to these, you may have to go through what is called psychometric testing or what is called psychometric assessment. And so what the psychometric testing includes is that it will test for your intelligence, it will test for your personality, and it will test for your potential to fit this role. Such psychometric tests can and usually occur during the recruitment phase of your airline career. And so professionally, you are checked quite regularly, not only for your psychological state, 
but of that of your physiological situation. But what if you're caught to not be psychologically feeling well? The pandemic was not kind to a lot of us and put a lot of mental strain on pilots. Perhaps as a student, you lost your financial sponsor. As a professional pilot, you lost your job. And in general, things were and are hard. And when things are hard, there is a stigma behind that mental strain. If you tell on yourself, you could lose your license, your job, and your income. So why, you ask, would someone tell? The consequences are possibly quite harsh if we don't find out. Think German Wings 9525. But the consequences on pilots themselves are also quite harsh if we do speak out. Luckily, there is an out a support group called Mayday. Individuals who are there to listen and help. And if they're not able to help, they will point you in the right direction towards resources and other individuals who they feel can be best suited for your difficulty. Now, I haven't forgotten about the last phase of our career, which is retirement. But well, if you're not flying, then you're not being checked. But I am sure that the support network will remain there to assist you. Last week, I had attended a safety meeting on mental health, as well as the Aeronautical Rescue Coordination Center, something I'll talk about in a later video. But I wanted to shed some light on mental health because I think at any given point in this life of ours, we need to be reminded of the help that is available to us. So definitely check out mayday-sa.org.za, a great bunch of people who are there to help you. Now, if you guys know any other organization that is unbiased with helping pilots with their mental issues, do comment below to help save a life. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Remember, if you like my content, please do subscribe and like this video so that the YouTube algorithm will allow us to expose more people to this type of content. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.